We have the highest gas prices in 13 years, and we've seen more than 2 million illegals cross the southern border in the last year. These are the kind of national problems the American people want Congress to solve. They elected us to do a job, to have robust debate, and to make tough choices to take real action in Congress. But at the very least, they expect us to show up to work. And yet, for going on almost two years now, the idea of proxy voting has made a mockery of the legislative process. Under the proxy voting rules that still remain in place in this House, a member of Congress could vote to authorize military action. They could spend trillions of dollars or to fundamentally, fundamentally rewrite our nation's laws. All of their, all while sitting on their couch at home, on a cruise ship, or on a boat, or even a fundraiser that just a phone call, with just using a phone call to a fellow colleague. Think about that. This has all happened in the last two years in this body. When it comes to committee work, we marked up two reconciliation packages in the House Budget Committee. This Congress, with a combined price tag of over seven trillion, seven trillion, that's with a T. One of these bills, the so-called Build Back Better Act, is the most expensive piece of legislation in the history of the United States. Guess how many times we met in person in the House Budget Committee? Zero. To spend over $7 trillion, the most in the history of this nation. The American people have had their lives turned upside down for the last two years. In some cases, their lives have been destroyed completely and entirely. The very least Congress can do is we can show up for work. Like many of bad policies in history, proxy voting starting out as a limited measure. Back in May of 2020, it was authorized for 45 days. 70 House members proxy voted then. Fast forward to now, and more than 300 members have submitted letters to the clerk delegating their votes to other members. Speaker Pelosi has, extending, has extended proxy voting not once, not twice, but more than 10 consecutive times. In fact, over 17,000 votes, over 17,000 votes, almost 10% of all votes cast in the House last year was by proxy. A single representative can cast the vote of 10 absentee members. Theoretically, that means it would take no more than 20 members of Congress to conduct business on behalf of the entire House of Representatives, on behalf of the nation. This isn't just the wrong way to govern, it's completely backwards. It runs counter to the design of democracy. Our framers settled this question over 200 years ago, back during the Articles of Confederation and the Constitutional Convention. They rejected proposals to permit proxy voting. Congress is meant to convey in person. For over 230 years, we've operated with in-person quorum calls and voting during pandemics and world wars. In 1814, when the British set fire to this building, Congress convened in a hotel until the Capitol was rebuilt the next year. During the Civil War, troops were trained on Capitol grounds 
and they were even quartered in the House and Senate chambers <coughs> for a brief time. Despite all that, Congress, guess what? They still convened in person. In 1918, during the Spanish flu, considered one of the deadliest pandemics in world history, Congress still voted in person. The job is not meant to be easy. We all knew that when we signed up to represent all of our constituents, nor should we make it easy by phoning it in. We are each responsible for representing hundreds of thousands of hardworking, good Americans that should be able to depend on us to show up for work, just as so many of them have done, especially during this time of crisis. 